Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another guest on my special gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And my guest today is a young lady that I met uh, a number of years ago, I think a decade or so ago, and I've been very impressed with her from that day forward to now, and it's become a very close friend, my good friend, Sarah Boren Allen. Sarah, welcome to the podcast. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. I'm so glad you could join us. And the reason I'm doing this, as I've mentioned in previous podcasts, is just to really get a perspective on what people are thinking about as we go through this. So I've got four or five questions for you. And my first question is, so what is your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Excellent question, David. Um, for me, it's, of course, um, just remembering what I'm grateful for. So waking up in the morning, putting together a to-do list, regardless of how big and small it is, making sure I'm doing something that's health and wellness, whether that's mm -hmm. doing a workout from online or stretching or doing some meditation, just focusing on well-being is the key during this pandemic. And more importantly, it's um, taking the time to write down what you're thankful for, whether that's a Zoom call or your morning coffee or a healthy breakfast, just making a note each day so you can kind of reflect after this is over. That's great. And that actually segues nicely into my second question. When you said writing down what you're grateful for, thankful for, appreciate it, what have you. Have you found that your what you're grateful for has changed significantly before this happened versus what you're grateful now versus maybe before? Yes, I feel like um, it's honestly forced me to slow down and appreciate the little things, mm -hmm. whether that's connecting with a friend online or just the beauty of what's blooming outside, slowing down and reflecting on what's more important. And essentially like what makes me tick as a human could be completely different than what makes someone else tick. Mm -hmm. And then also spending quality time with my dog. Usually mm -hmm. I am running a hundred miles per minute and leaving the house at 6 30 AM and being wow. able to stay at home right now, work from home and spend quality time with the dog. And my husband has been huge. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And, and I was thinking as you were saying that in time with the dog and knowing you and Corey as well as I do you better, but certainly Corey as well, both of you uh, neat young individuals just go, 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 juggling a ton of balls. What do you find or what would you say to the person that maybe isn't quite as motivated as you and Corey are in terms of maybe some tips or thoughts or ideas of what they can be doing while they're homebound like everybody is now? So I think it's creating your list of what you've been putting off, whether that's starting a new book, self-development, um, maybe doing a new recipe that you've never thought you had the time to make, or maybe making bread for the first time. Just putting together a list of what you've been putting off. For me, it was learning how to make dolmas from scratch. I love eating them, but I didn't know how to make them. And it ended up turning into a three hour project. And for me, that wow. was a huge accomplishment for the day. It was a Tuesday and I got to check something off. So um, I would say just create a list and then read some books or watch a show that you've been dying to see and watch the whole season. I think it's anything big or small you can put on that list to do. Excellent, excellent, excellent answer. And would you say, do you have, whether it's maybe just Sarah, not so much Sarah and Corey, but do you have sort of a mantra or a quote or something or a philosophy that you kind of use that sort of typifies or sustains you just through life, but certainly through this, but maybe something that is kind of a, a, a overarching philosophy that you have above everything that kind of guides you? You know, I feel like I have several, but the thing that stands um, out the most is joy. So finding joy um, in anything. And I think that that can pertain to a lot of different facets of someone's life, whether that's an encouragement email from a colleague or um, just having that interaction online with a friend that you have lost touch with or maybe sending a card in the mail to someone that is on your mind so i think joy would probably be my mantra through all of this this is a very scary and um un unexpected time and today and so just taking what you can control and what you can control is your own joy or what you can give to others and so um i think that should be the that's our personal mantra that's neat. that's a good one. That's a good one. And my last question is, we've got this downtime, I guess you'd call it, as some people would, would call it, again, housebound, stay at home, uh, and so forth. 
what are you going to be doing now so that you can hit the ground running when this thing ends? Because we know it's going to end. We don't know when, but we know it's going to end at some point, vaccines or otherwise. But, but what are you kind of formulating now so when it does, that you can really take off maybe to a new normal? So for me, I'm still putting things like on my future calendar. So I'm booking things for September, October, November, things that I can be excited for, whether that's a trip or a dinner somewhere, just putting things on the calendar. And then also I'm trying to, some of my goals I have for the year, one was a book reading goal of 50 books, like oh, cruising wow. through that right now. I'm halfway through that book goal and so being able to say I'm going to hit my 50 books is huge um so that is just two of them and then also still doing something fitness so when I get back out um in society and go to my orange theory classes or my peer bar classes I'll still feel like I'm not completely unfit and so I'm still doing the online workouts um throughout my week it's not every day but it's at least twice a week so just a few things I'm doing to feel ready to go back. And that's that. good too. And it, I mentioned a new normal. I have an online fitness uh, group called X gym and I would go to the gym and it was great. It's a 22 minute workout, but now it's online. I like it so much. I may not go back. And I think that's why there will be probably a new normal to a lot of this, but, but just so I was clear, you've already read 25 books. 25 books this year so oh, i've cool. read cool. that's so impressive <laughs> i've read since the whole quarantine started i've read 11 books oh, so i have just had like a personal goal every day of carving out time to read um where mm -hmm. i would normally never get to have that opportunity that is fantastic. Well, as you know, I've always been a little concerned about your lack of motivation. So I know. <laughs> you can talk about that. So that's great. Well, listen, thank you so much. Those were great tips. And as I said, the whole idea is to get out there and maybe give people some inspiration or some thoughts or ideas or motivation of what they can be doing because now this uh, this downtime could put pre could prepare people really to hit the ground running, as I said, because when it's over, I think there's gonna be a new norm and a lot of exciting things happening. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, David, for just letting me come and chat today. I appreciate it. You bet. Thank you so much for being here. We'll chat soon. Sounds great. Thank you. Bye-bye.